Hello, everybody. Welcome to the dispersion. I hope you're very ni- or nice and comfortable on your couch in your comfy clothes. I'm not because that would be quite awkward if I were in my pajamas on this video. You look great. Thank you. I dressed up. You really like it? Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, I also wore this special hat that says dad life because I'm going to be a new father. Oh my gosh, I didn't know you were doing that right now. I didn't either until just now. I just decided <laughs> to do that just now. Uh, you just told the whole world, so uh, I hope you're okay, okay with that. I told all 10 hey, people. Hey YouTube, <laughs> Colin is a daddy. <laughs> well, uh, we don't have very many announcements other than after this whole COVID-19 thing goes away, we are going to be taking a discounted trip to Disney World and you don't have to pay anything. It's sponsored. We're going to go. It's going to be like a three-day trip. It's going to be like Friday through Friday through Sunday, I think. We haven't worked out all the details, but we'll see how that goes. That's about the only announcement I have. We're not sure what's going to go on with youth camp in the summer right now, but we'll uh, let you know if there's any change in that or anything like that. Uh, But right now, we have the scripture from Maddie Preston, and then we also have a testimony from Doug Brody. Death is yet unseen, and reverent fear constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he was going. By faith he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to a city that has foundation, whose designer and builder is God. Verse 13. They all, these all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. In verse 39, And all these, though condemned through their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us they should not be made perfect. Alrighty, take a look. I've lived in the Jeffersonville area all my life, except for the time I was in the Navy and uh, during the Vietnam War. And uh, it, that's kind of where I want to start this story. Uh, I was not a Christian uh, until uh, around the time I got out of the Navy and went back to college. I was uh, thinking about what I wanted to do for a career and a vocation. And as I searched through those things, I began to wonder about life and what it's about and, and what I should do with my life. And uh, the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, I came to find out, kind of addresses and speaks to the questions I was asking. And I, I want to read a couple of verses of that for you. It says, meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher, utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. What has been done will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. I began to wonder, what is it that I'm here for? Is it just to work, live, die, raise a family, those kinds of things. And I began to search out God. And uh, as I went to church and talked to my friends and family and uh, talked to my wife, and uh, I began to realize that God has a meaning and a purpose for my life and for everyone's life. So at the, at the church, I gave my life to Christ after doing, like I said, doing some searching and, and uh and praying, and uh, now uh, my life with God is a little different. Uh, so I'd like to read to you what my life is like now. This is from Psalm 145. I will exalt to you, my God and King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty and will meditate on your wonderful works. And that's the difference in my life from one of being uh, searching and not knowing to one of being sure of my life in Christ and my faith in him. And it's been a, a long road, uh, but uh, he's been there with me every step of the way. So I hope you'll consider what your life is about and what Christ can do for you. Thank you and God bless. Hi, man. Hi guys, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that. I was really blessed by Doug's testimony today. Um, and yeah, I've been, 
in all my prep for teaching the class that is taught to the whole church, um, I was just struck with the idea that we are partners in the gospel, and so it was really encouraging to hear, especially Doug reading Psalm, uh, the Psalm he read from uh, I think it's 145 or whatever it was, and um, they're just super encouraged by that. So I'm thankful for our partnership in the gospel, for the fact that the gospel brings us together, and so that's why we want you to hear those testimonies. Hope that's encouraging to you. Uh, so let's just do a little worship. So one of the things I think is kind of cool about this time period is that it, it points out the fact that God is not bound to this building. Um, yep. I guess you guys probably don't know where I'm at, but where we're at. But we're in the sanctuary at church, but there's nobody else here, and uh, we're live streaming to you guys. And it doesn't matter where you're at, but God is worthy of worship in our homes. He's worthy of worship in our in our hearts. He's worthy of worship in this place. But there's nothing special about this building in and of itself. Um, that we call church. Um, the church is the people, and we can worship wherever we are. So there's some beauty to that, but I hope it also causes you to long for uh, coming back together. And, and we do long for that. We will long to come back together with you guys and, and be able to see you face-to-face. And um, so in light of what, all that's going on, uh, we're gonna sing the song, Christ is Sure and Steady Anchor. And so you guys sing, wherever you're at, sing. Just belt it out. And I don't care how embarrassing it is, just for the glory of God, just belt it out and sing it out and sing with us. And we'll join you in, uh, uh, in spirit. And you join us in spirit as we worship together. Christ the sure and steady anchor in the fury of the storm. When the winds of doubt blow through me and my sails have all been torn. In the suffering, in the sorrows, when my sinking hopes are few, I will hold fast to the anchor, it shall never be removed. My guitar's coming through, right? Just checking. (laughs) Christ the sure and steady anchor, while the tempest rages on. When temptation claims the battle, and it seems the night has won. Deeper still then goes the anchor, though I justly stand accused. I will hold fast to the anchor, it shall never be removed. Christ the sure and steady anchor Through the floods of unbelief Hopeless somehow, oh my soul Now lift your eyes to Calvary This my ballast of assurance See his love forever proved I will hold fast to the anchor it shall never be removed. Christ the sure and steady anchor as we face the wave of death. When these trials give way to glory as we draw our final breath. We will cross that great horizon, clouds behind and life secure. And the calm will be the better for the storms that we endured. Christ the shore of our salvation, ever faithful, ever true. We will hold fast to the anchor, it shall never be removed. Awesome. I realized that halfway through that you couldn't see words. I, I pulled up the words on oh, my good. iPad, okay. don't you All right, worry. You're, all right, you're, you're with Just it. so you know, I'm not texting, I'm looking at the lyrics to our songs. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> Likely excuse. That is a really encouraging um, thought. I mean, just that... 
the, uh, that Christ is our anchor. So in this storm, in the midst of all of that's going on, um, hold to Jesus Christ. Um, and what a, uh, an anchor he is. He holds us uh, as well. And that's what we're singing about in this song is that um, he will hold you fast. If you put your faith in Jesus Christ, if you've made him your own, then he will hold you fast. Fast. When you fear, uh, when you doubt, when there's anxieties, when there's difficulties, put your faith in the Lord Jesus uh, and he will hold you fast. faith will fail, Christ will hold me fast. When the tempter would prevail, he will hold me fast. I could never keep my hold through life's fearful path, for my love is often cold. He will hold me thankful, Lord, that you draw near to us as we draw near to you, and so we pray that you would do that even now. Uh, Lord, as we're uh, scattered, not gathered um, right now, and as we are uh, hopefully turning our hearts, our attention, uh, in, uh, attentions toward you, I pray that you would draw near to us, um, that you would uh, assure us of this great truth um, that if we are in Jesus Christ, that you hold us fast. No one can snatch us from your hand. So, Father, I pray for Colin now. I pray that you might bless him, that you might give him grace as he teaches, uh, teaches us and instructs us as we look at your word. I pray this would just be an encouraging time for us um, and that, that we can um, uh, be up uplifted in our faith uh, even as we are scattered about. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks, Brian. All right, if you could turn in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11. 
I'll give you a couple seconds to turn there. We're going to be starting in verse 7 and going all the way to verse 12. This is a little different for all of us. Um, I'm making eye contact with the eye of a camera instead of the eye of people, so it's going to be a you little bit. You can look to me. Not the whole time. That'd be really I mean, super awkward, but. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. I don't know, if, I don't know about that. But uh, that's where we're going to be, Hebrews 11. And uh, let's go ahead and start in verse 7. It says, By faith, Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, were born descendants, as many as the stars of heaven, and as many as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. So tonight... Like I said, it's a little bit different. COVID-19 and coronavirus has taken over the world, kind of that pandemic is uh, affecting every aspect of our life. You guys are not in school. Uh, some, some of your parents have to work from home. Some of your parents like, can't even work at their jobs right now. Um, and something that we see is kind of relaxing and refreshing and something that prepares for the next day, like staying at home, watching TV or reading or whatever, suddenly becomes kind of this restricting, cooped up feeling. And I remember when I was, I don't know, 15 years old, my parents moved from Michigan. We went to back to Texas. My dad became an oil dry, or an oil hauler uh, in a big semi truck. And we bought an RV and we traveled around Texas for a year and a half. And I remember that my only friends were my family because we didn't stay in a, one place longer than about four or five months. And I remember that feeling of loneliness that came. Even though I was with my family all the time, I was just kind of getting uh, cabin fever. I was stuck in an RV. I would go and take walks. And I just felt this loneliness and this sadness that I had never experienced before. And I think that um, it's a little bit amplified right now for all of us who are sitting at home being quarantined. We're being cooped up like chickens. We can't go hang out with people. Some of you guys probably think that's awesome. Uh, but for like me and Brian, we have to hang out with people. Like that's like what we want to do. Need we want to hang out people. with people, need people in our lives. Um, but it's amplified because every time you turn on the TV or every time you look on social media, there's bad news all the time. This disease is just, or this virus is just growing. And there's not a lot of hope in the news or in the social media right now. And so I think that this is a great opportunity to talk about something that we've mentioned every single week since uh, the beginning of at least my time here at Youth Group, which has almost been two years now, which is the subject of faith. And that's a pretty, it's not a very broad subject, but it's a very deep subject, so we're not going to be able to go into everything tonight. But out of this verse, or out of this passage in Hebrews 11, there's a few things that, I, that came to my mind while I was reading them. And actually, I have been reading Hebrews as my own personal worship because I was supposed to be teaching with Kirby O'Brien uh, the Sunday school class Hebrews, but obviously that's not happening anymore. But I was thankful. Back. Hopefully we'll get that back. And we'll get it back sometime. But right <laughs> now, it's postponed. It's on pause. But I was thankful that I was able to do or able to study this passage just a little bit a couple weeks ago, even before we uh, delve into the lesson or until, until I even before I dive into the lesson today. But it's a great opportunity to talk about faith, and these three characters that come up in this passage are three characters that we've actually talked about in the whole entire Scarlet Thread of Redemption that we've talked about this past few weeks before spring break and before COVID-19. Every Wednesday night, we talk about the Scarlet Thread of Redemption, and Noah, Abraham, and Sarah, among other characters in the Bible, came up. And they are, in this passage listed as faithful people, people who lived lives of faith. 
And so I dove a little bit deeper into that and some things were revealed to me. The Holy Spirit encouraged me in a few things and I wanna pass those things on to you guys and I pray that they're just as encouraging to you because we all have heard the word faith. We all know that we need to live a life of faith. We all know that we need to follow after Jesus, put our faith and our trust in him. But hearing it and doing it are two different things and hearing it and understanding it are also two completely different things. So I hope there's a little bit of light shed on the subject tonight. And the first thing that I wanna talk about that we can do in our lives to live a life of faith is to trust in the promised work of God. And think about all the stories, the story of Noah and how he, God told him to build an ark because he was gonna flood the earth and the story of Abraham and Sarah and how he promised them that he would give them a son even though, the, the, like it says right here in scriptures, he was as good as dead, he was old. He, they were gonna be unable to have children but God promised it to him. And then you jump back even further than, into what we talked about on Wednesday nights with Genesis three where it talks about how God promised that out of the offspring of the woman, or the offspring of the woman would crush the head of the serpent. And there's all these promises going on here. And we know that all of them have come true. Jesus is the savior, the offspring of the woman who crushed the head of the serpent. God promised that to Noah that the earth would be flooded, and he flooded the earth. He also promised that he would never again flood the earth in such a way, and he hasn't. Abraham and Sarah were promised a son, and they were given that son, and they were promised that their offspring would be Countless, more numerous than the stars, more numerous than the grains of sand. And it happened. So why is the author of Hebrews going back to these characters? What, are, what is he trying to show us here? He's trying to show us that God is a faithful God. He is a loving God. And you can trust in the promised work of God. Whatever he says mm -hmm. is going to come true. And while I was reading that, I was like, okay, author of Hebrews, I understand, like, God is trustworthy. He's someone who I must put my faith in. But all those promises are in the Old Testament. They're all to these people who lived thousands and thousands of years ago, and I really have not much of a connection with other than what's written right here in, this word, in the Word. But the Lord brought me to uh, 2 Thessalonians, chapter 3, verse 3, and you can turn there if you want, but it says, the Lord who is faithful will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. Let me see if I have it actually right here, word for word. It says, yeah, here it is. The Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. How do we know that this verse is true? This is a promise that is given to us right now that the Lord is going to strengthen us and he's going to protect us. But how do we, how do we know that that's true? And amongst or amidst this trying time of COVID-19 and corona, like, how do we know that we can trust in that? Well, Hebrews is sh showing us how, why we can. Because God was faithful to all of these people throughout Scripture, and he wasn't just faithful to those three characters. He was faithful to numerous, many other people in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. His word is something that we can trust in. So how do we respond to that? How do we respond to the promised work and the promised word of God? How do we respond in faith? Well, there's actually two different aspects in the response to, in, to responding in faith, and one of them is the inner response, and then there's the external response. The inner response is the Holy Spirit coming to you. He's taking that cold, hard, heavy stone of a heart that you have and he's warming it with the love of Jesus. He is showing you who Jesus is through his scriptures, through the gospel. And that is called salvation, the repentance of sin, where you turn from your sin and you turn towards Jesus and your love and your desires are then focused on him because of what the Holy Spirit has done in your heart. That is the inner response. And out of that inner, or out of that inner response of faith comes the outer response of faith. And that's kind of, uh, it's a little bit harder to determine because maybe someone who had an inner, inner response of faith to the Holy Spirit, to the gospel, maybe he used to speak with harsh words and was unkind to the people around him and didn't, sp didn't act with love, kindness, grace, mercy, forgiveness. 
He was mean and he was harsh, but then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit changes his heart. And now he's going to church. He's speaking with kind words. He's treating his neighbors as if as himself. He is loving them and he is sharing the gospel. Those are external things that we can see. We can see people who have a desire to read the word whereas they didn't have a desire before. Now they're Mm -hmm. daily diving into the word and they're understanding scripture and they're paying attention whenever the preacher is talking about scripture or talking about the gospel and they're given this new desire so all of a sudden they wanna eat up everything they can and learn everything they can about the gospel and about Jesus. That is an external response of faith that is a result of an inner response of faith. And if you have all those outer things without actually having an inner response of faith, the Holy Spirit has not actually revealed the gospel to you, then it's all a facade, it's all an act, it's, it's useless, really. So that's something that we can do. We can trust in the promised work of God and we can respond in faith, but how do we do that? It's through diving into the word. We respond in faith by diving into the word, praying, going into, uh, praying to the Father, to reveal what his will is for our lives, to reveal uh, what he has for us in his word, and to keep us from sin. But there's one more practical thing that I think that we can uh, do right now in this time where it's kind of easy to become ungrateful, it's easy to become discouraged with everything that's going on with staying in your home and not being able to go out, and it's a simple, simple thing. And it kind of sounded ridiculous whenever it popped into my mind and I prayed over it and I was, the Lord brought me back to some memories that I had with my grandmothers, both, both sides of my family. Um, and that's counting your blessings. That's the third point, is counting your blessings. My grandmother, she used to hum and sing that song, Count Your Blessings, one by one, all the time. And it was just some song that she hummed. Like, that's fantastic. I know, I know. But she would do it all the time. But for years and years, done. for years and years as a kid, I was just kind of annoyed by it. But I just thought it was a part of her character, is what she did. She couldn't help it. And then my step grandmother on my other side, she would always say, "Count your blessings." And it'd be like whenever I would be going through like Whataburger, which I'm from Texas, it's the best burger place ever. And I would get the wrong meal, and we'd get all the way home, and I'd be like, "Ah." Oh, I got the wrong meal. She'd be like, well, count your blessings. At least you have food, which is the last thing I want to hear at that point when I have like chicken strips instead of burgers or something like that. But this is a principle that I'm having to implement in my life right now. I'm having to think about all the blessings that the Lord has put in my life. And y'all have been through Awana or Rooted or something like that. It's a very elementary question to answer. Count your blessings. How do you count your blessings? What are your blessings? Uh, the breath that you, the breath that you just took, uh, the life that you're living, the house that you have, your family, even though they annoy you, food on the table, water. It's all, you can literally find, never, never run out of blessings mm-hmm. from the Lord. Mm-hmm. Even the smallest, most, my, most minute thing is a blessing from the Lord. Why is that important, though? Why is counting your blessings something that will strengthen your faith? Well, let me tell you what a blessing is. A blessing is that you have a God that you can trust in his promised word. He is faithful. He is faithful to do what he says. And the blessings that we're tasting right now here on earth, even in this kind of dark time, is only a small little grain of sand compared to the blessing and the glory that we're gonna experience whenever we are in heaven with him. Everything here on earth is going to rot. It's going to rust. People are going to die. People are going to get sick. Buildings will crumble. People are going to change. But you have a God who is unchanging, who is faithful, and who is glorious, and who wants to have a personal relationship with you who loves you so much that he sent his son to die on the cross. And that's the ultimate blessing of all. That's the ultimate gift to us. He died on the cross and was raised again so that we can have a right relationship with God. And if that is not counted among your blessings, if that's not something that is a priority in your life or maybe you have not had an inner response of faith, Brian and I both pray constantly 
that you would respond in faith, that the Holy Spirit would do a work in your heart and that you would in turn love Jesus, love his word and love his people and love the gospel. So as you go to your uh, small groups, um, think about your personal relationship with Jesus and how it can uh, be changed right now in this time, what you can do to strengthen your faith, what you can do to strengthen yourself in the Lord like Brian talked about on Sunday a couple weeks ago. I pray that this time would be fruitful while you're at home, that you, it'd be a fruitful time in the word and that it would also be an encouraging time in the word. So let me pray and then uh, you can transition over to your small groups, which I believe are gonna be on They're Google. in your email. So if you, uh, I sent an email today, um, so it's on Zoom. All, all three of the small groups are in Zoom. So there's middle school guys, middle school girls, and then high school group is all together. And so uh, all those links are in the email I sent out today. Um, if you have trouble, um, you can email me at brian.joins at oakparkbaptist.com. That's J-O-I-N-E-S, joins. And, uh, or you can um, respond to that email, and I'll uh, be monitoring stuff and, and be able to help you out. So, uh, or get in touch with a small group leader, uh, however. So, but uh, yeah, those Zoom groups are in that email. So just click that link and you should be able to connect to Zoom. Most of you guys are probably pros at Zoom at this point, <laughs> I would say. I don't, I don't really know. I haven't talked to, yeah. I haven't had a chance to talk to yeah. you all face to face in a little bit, but, uh, but I would assume most of you guys are pros at it now. Yeah. All right. Well, let me pray and then y'all can get to it. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you that you have given us breath in our lungs. I thank you that you have given us your son as the ultimate blessing and the ultimate sacrifice, Lord, so that we can have a right relationship with you. And I pray that as we go about our daily lives that we would not forget the simple and small blessings that you give us on a daily basis, Lord. I pray that we would have content hearts and that we would be focused on you and that we would have faith and put our, put our faith and have trust in you because your promises are true and your word is good. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you want to tell them? Uh, oh, yeah. Thing? One out of the two things that I said earlier is for April Fool's. Your choice. Your choice? Oh, they get to decide. <laughs> oh, wow. That's crazy. All right, see you guys later.